Arika Johnson, just now, shared with public, character list, Alita, Rosa Salazar, Doc Ito, Christoph Waltz, Hugo, Kian Johnson, Nano, Chicha Amatayakol, Arika, Nana Kamatsu, Alita, Battle Angel 175, Ashes of War. Scene 1, The Call to Arms. The skyline of Iron City shimmered with the warm glow of the rising sun, but tension hung thick in the air. Alita stood at the edge of a building, looking out across the city. Doc Ito approached, his expression grim. Intel just came in, he said. A new enemy, an organized military force. They're calling themselves the Crimson Syndicate. They've declared war on Iron City. Alita tightened her grip on the handle of her Damascus blade, her eyes hardening. Then we fight. We're not letting these bastards take our home. Hugo walked up, a pistol in one hand, rifle slung over his shoulder. Damn right we won't. Arika and Nano joined them, their expressions deadly serious. Nano's eyes briefly glowed with psionic energy, sensing the danger ahead. Arika placed a hand on Nano's arm. We'll be fine. Just like always. The group gathered in a circle, each member armed and ready for battle. Scene 2. Crimson Syndicate's First Strike Iron City's streets were eerily silent as the group made their way toward the Syndicate's target location, a strategic power hub at the city's edge. But silence was the calm before the storm. A high-pitched whine echoed through the air, and without warning, missiles flew from the rooftops, explosions shaking the ground beneath their feet. Incoming! Hugo yelled, diving for cover as debris rained down. Alita leapt into action, dodging shrapnel and sprinting through the chaos toward the source of the attack. Her blade gleamed in the smoke-filled air as she slashed through the first wave of enemy combatants, blood spraying across the pavement. Arika charged in alongside her, her katana a deadly blur. She deflected bullets with skillful precision, while Nano sent out waves of psychic energy that disarmed enemies and broke bones with a mere flick of her wrist. Doc, Ito, and Echo provided cover from the rear, hoot relaying enemy positions from the sky. Scene 3. Assault on the Power Hub They reached the Power Hub, but the Crimson Syndicate was already entrenched. Massive war machines patrolled the area, their metal legs clanking loudly as they moved across the open space. Syndicate soldiers lined the rooftops, weapons aimed down. Hell of a welcome party, Hugo muttered. Alita charged first, her blade raised high. She leapt onto the nearest war machine, slicing through its control wires with precision strikes. Sparks flew as the machine's limbs buckled and it collapsed to the ground with a thunderous crash. Arika and Nano weren't far behind. Arika's katana slashed through a syndicate soldier's neck, severing it in one clean stroke. Nano unleashed a psychic blast, sending a group of soldiers flying back, their bodies colliding against the concrete walls with sickening thuds. Hugo and Doc Ito worked together to disable the remaining war machines, Hugo launching EMP grenades while Doc Ito hacked into their systems. Scene 4 the commander emerges. As the dust settled, a towering figure emerged from the smoke, a hulking, armored figure with red glowing eyes and massive mechanical limbs. This was the Crimson Syndicate's commander, a half-cyborg monstrosity, his voice booming. Fools, you think you can stand against me? Against the Crimson Syndicate? Alita's eyes narrowed. You have no idea who you're dealing with. The commander raised his arm, a massive gun barrel built into his forearm. He fired a barrage of bullets, forcing the group to scatter. Alita dodged left, narrowly avoiding the gunfire, while Hugo dove behind cover. Arika charged in from the side, her katana ready to strike, but the commander swatted her away with a backhanded blow that sent her crashing into a nearby wall. She hit the ground hard, blood dripping from her forehead. Nano screamed in rage, her psychic energy flaring as she hurled a telekinetic blast at the commander, but his armor absorbed the impact. Scene 5. Blood and Vengeance Alita rushed toward the commander, her blade glinting in the dim light. She ducked beneath another round of gunfire and leapt into the air, bringing her blade down with all her strength. 
The Damascus steel sliced through the commander's armor, sparks flying. The commander roared in pain, staggering back. Alita didn't relent. She pressed the attack, striking again and again, each blow sending a spray of metal and blood into the air. The commander managed to catch her blade mid-swing, his mechanical fingers clamping down on the steel. He grinned, his bloodshot eyes gleaming with malice. You're strong, but not strong enough. Alita twisted her blade free and, with a powerful kick to his chest, sent the commander stumbling backward. Hugo rushed in, unloading his rifle into the cyborg's exposed weak spot. Scene 6. Arika's Revenge Arika staggered to her feet, wiping the blood from her face. Her eyes were filled with fury as she watched the commander reel from Alita and Hugo's assault. She glanced at Nano, who was still catching her breath, and nodded. With a primal scream, Arika charged, her katana glowing in the faint light. She slashed at the commander's legs, severing one of his mechanical limbs. The massive cyborg collapsed to one knee, roaring in agony. Alita seized the moment, driving her blade into the commander's chest, piercing his heart. The commander's eyes widened in shock, blood gurgling from his mouth as his body convulsed. You, Iron City, will burn. He rasped before his head lolled forward, lifeless. Scene 7, Aftermath and Warnings The group stood amidst the wreckage, bloodied but victorious. The body of the Crimson Syndicate commander lay in pieces at their feet. Doc Ito surveyed the scene, his face grim. This was just the beginning. The Syndicate isn't going to stop here. Alita nodded, wiping the blood from her blade. Let them come. We'll be ready. Arika limped over to Nano, their eyes meeting with a mix of relief and exhaustion. Arika pulled Nano into a tight embrace, her lips brushing against Nano's ear. We'll fight them all if we have to. Nano smiled, resting her head on Arika's shoulder. We always win. Scene 8. The Council Meeting Later that night, Alita, Hugo, Doc, Ito, Arika, and Nano gathered in Iron City's underground bunker, where the city council awaited them. The council looked grim, aware of the escalating threat. We received intel that the syndicate is massing forces near the border, one of the council members said. Their next attack will be even bigger. Alita slammed her fist on the table. We need to hit them first. Take the fight to their doorstep. The council members exchanged uneasy glances, but they knew Alita was right. Scene 9. Preparing for War The group returned to Doc Ito's lab, where they began preparing for the inevitable war. Alita sharpened her Damascus blade while Hugo cleaned his weapons. Arika meditated quietly, her katana resting beside her, while Nano stood by the window, staring out into the night. We need to be ready, Alita said, breaking the silence. The syndicate is going to come at us with everything they've got. Doc Ito adjusted his glasses. I'm preparing new tech for all of you. We'll have the edge. Scene 10, Iron City Rises. The final scene showed the streets of Iron City bathed in the orange glow of sunrise. Citizens were preparing for battle, fortifying defenses, gathering supplies, and training for the inevitable. Alita stood at the city's edge, her blade resting on her shoulder. Hugo, Arika, Nano, Doc, Ito, Hoot, and Echo stood beside her. They looked out at the horizon, where the Syndicate's forces would soon arrive. For Iron City, Alita said, her voice filled with unshakable resolve. The group echoed her words, ready to fight once more. This concludes Alita, Battle Angel 175, Ashes of War. Like, comment, share.